offer offer some remarks here. Um, first of all, the um, model that we had, I, I um, talked with Larissa after this morning's session about you know the relative size of the impacts on uh, heart disease related mortality within the model and why it wasn't reduced all that much uh, for the uh, smoking cessation intervention whilst it was reduced very significantly for the immediate reduction of that rate. I, th I think it's pretty clear immediate reduction of the rate will lower it, right? I mean, <laughs> if you reduce that rate um, significantly, it directly reduces the number of people coming across. As to why, you know, it, it wasn't more reduced by the smoking cessation. It, it bears emphasis that, that data, time series here of, of certain quantities or a particular scale or number count of people with developed heart disease you know, by the end of the model. That's not just a number. It's a number that relates to something in a dynamic system. You could say it's a measurement of that if you want to use more sort of technical parlance, but um, it's not just any old number. It's a number of a certain sort. And it's influenced by the underlying structure of the model at the risk of sounding like a, a broken drum. And um, broken drum. So what do you say? A broken record, sorry. <laughs> a broken drum uh, will, will, won't sound like much. Um, so, so those graphs we saw, you know, involving um, the impact in the baseline, um, and then in alternative scenarios, um, uh, numbers regarding each of these things, um, uh, and this this latest one we added. I mean, those aren't just sequences of arbitrary numbers over time. Um, they're, they're measurements from underlying pieces of a dynamical system as depicted by the model. You know, they appear from certain places within this system, certain nexi within this system, and each of them is from a certain nexus. You count in this case along this pathway or, you know, along that pathway or the count of people, the fraction of people at any one time or in each of these states. And that gives it a very specific character. And what I want to emphasize here is it's easy if, if someone doesn't know anything about dynamical systems, if someone doesn't, know anything about how processes operate. See, it's easy to think about, oh, it's just a bunch of numbers, it's just a bunch of numbers, it's just a bunch of numbers, and it could be bigger, it could be lower. Why that one reduced by a bunch and this one by a little? There's, there's not a lot of theoretical, you know, grounded understanding, mechanistic understanding about why we see these effects. And what I'm saying is modeling, it's imperfect. It's the worst of all things to do except for everything else for understanding these systems and uh, to, to paraphrase Churchill. And here, the, the types of quantities we chose to measure have certain characteristics in certain characteristic areas of insight and blind spots. We chose on the seat of the pants and, you know, um, very spontaneously to plot out a particular statistic here, cumulative deaths with heart disease. I, I just kind of drew it out of that. I thought, oh, that'd be easy to understand. Okay, fine. Um, to measure something about how much it reduced the burden of heart disease. But, you know, I... Um, excuse me, deaths from heart disease, or the burden of death from heart disease. But, you know, I, I could have looked at other measures, too. I could have asked how many life years lived were there um, in the population. That's affected by mortality. And the impacts of those interventions would be different. It could be how many, what's the average age at which someone dies from heart disease? That would be very different if I change heart disease mortality, if I change smoking. 
And one of the things I talked with Larissa about, one of the blind spots, as it were, of this statistic, the amount of deaths with heart diseases, let's suppose that we were to run the model um, for, or we're running it for a hundred years. And imagine, so, so I'm gonna ask you to go through a Kadankan experiment, a sort of thought experiment with me. Imagine if the effect of smoking cessation in the model of improving, of lowering relapse or improving cessation or lowering the initiation. Imagine if the effects of that are to forestall, to delay the development of heart disease. Hmm? Seems like a reasonable thing to posit. There's censoring effects here, right? Like if we delay it enough, it may not occur in those hundred years, right? It may not happen within the time frame of a hundred years. But more than this, let's suppose it does. Let's suppose we imagine that we could easily compute this. It might be an interesting little challenge. We could record the average time at which the average age at which they develop heart disease. And maybe imagine if we developed it, uh, you know, went with it from an age of 50 to an age of 60. You could say, hey, that's a big gain. You'd be right. It's a big gain in terms of de delaying it, forestalling it, right? Um, but here's the thing. If once you're in the heart disease state, you have a very high rate of mortality. Imagine as soon as you enter that heart disease state, I'm not saying it is this way, but imagine for a thought experiment, as soon as you enter that, you were to die within the next year with near certitude. That's very, very high mortality rate. If we delay it, the average time getting it from 50 years to 60 years, we're running this thing for 100 years, we're still going to die from it, right? We're still going to die from it very quickly in the model. And we would, we might get very similar numbers of people cumulatively that have died from heart disease, even though we made a big difference in when they developed heart disease. We went from age 50 to age 60. We added years to their life potentially. They did die from heart disease. So in terms of the count of people who have died from heart disease, it won't be that much different. They, some will have died from it earlier, but later, but but we wouldn't see that in the final number. All we'd see is, you know, 49 or more that, or whatever it is. Um, 49, almost almost the same thing, because, you know, they, they it, it doesn't measure when they died from it, just that they died from it. And if the rates of mortality from heart disease are high enough, um, you're going to die from it regardless of whether it's earlier or later. So you want to reduce that that much. If we had record, recorded life years lived in the population, cumulative number of life years lived amongst people um, in the population, I would surmise that we'd actually see a notable improvement there. If we were had recorded the, the age at which someone dies from heart disease, I'm going to take the mean and standard deviation, look at the histogram of when that is, I bet that would differ quite a bit. But differences in when are masked by this. And if those numbers are high enough that people are going to go down here within the lifetime of the model, the cohort being followed by the model, regardless of whether they're delayed even by 20 years, you're going to be masking that effect. So the choice of metrics matters in terms of the insights that you get and the blind spots that will um, mask certain effects. Just because it didn't reduce the count of people who, who died from heart disease as you follow a 100-year co cohort much um, doesn't mean it didn't make a big difference. It may have made a big difference in other metrics that are more sensitive to when. Um, so choosing metrics that are appropriate, that are suitable, choosing metrics by which we might measure 
whether we've added years to life, and maybe whether we've added life to their years, to, to sort of paraphrase the WHO, um, is, is, a, is, is a very good thing often. And there'll be some metrics that have big blind spots, and this happens to be one of them. Now, there's something else that's that's also there, and it was something on which I made a kind of mumbly comment in our closing minutes before lunch. And that is the fact that right now we have this sort of clumped death with heart disease. We really combined together two things, death from heart disease, and death from other causes that happens to occur to people with heart disease. And we just kind of clump them into deaths with heart disease. And I, yeah, when I added it, I knew it immediately, but I said, like, okay, simplification, you know, just leave. But reducing by a factor of two, by 50%, that overall death rate, It'll be a massive, you know, massive achievement. Um, I would surmise that part of this rate, if this rate is 0.04, you know, part of it is death from other causes and part is death from heart disease. And maybe through some sort of really good management techniques and, and effective pharmaceutical administration and good adherence by patients and and other things, and possibly lifestyle change along with it, and so on, you might reduce, you know, quitting smoking, et cetera, um, you might reduce the rates from um, heart disease-related mortality, mortality from heart disease, attributed specifically to heart disease, the impacts of heart disease by um, some factor. You're unlikely to be able to reduce their overall mortality profile by a factor of two. So that was... That, that dividing it by two is probably way too ambitious. After all, we reduced it to a level. This one you may or may not remember, but it's 0 0.0125. And this one was reduced from 0.04 to 0.02, which is, it's really getting low. Um, and it's probably not, not realistic. So the fact it was doing double duty in that regard kind of masked the unrealism of that effect. Anyway, that was a good discussion with Larissa um, and just some reflections uh, on this model and the impacts of what to measure. One of the great flexibilities of any lot of, excuse me, agent-based models is that um, even more so than with compartmental models, even much more so, much more so, we have even a larger, with compartmental models, you can measure many types of things, system dynamics models. Uh, stock and flow models. Um, you can measure many things. You can have many types of output. Well, in age-based models, particularly effusive, and you want to be judicious about what you've chosen, but it doesn't hurt to have, you know, um, a good selection of outputs. After all, and especially outputs you can compare against empirical data, because that can help you falsify critique um, and and recognize opportunities to improve the model. So those were some utterances here inspired by that conversation with Larissa. Any anything people want to talk about there before we dive into another model? Probably come back to this one before the end of the week, maybe tomorrow, and we'll add some health economics measures to that. What do you think of that? Like or not? Hearing no major objections. Um, so there's no riot that's been caused by that statement. So um, I think we'll pause with that model then and we'll move on to new vistas. Is that okay? Okay, great, great. Um, that's uh, as close to the crowd going wild as 